I think that things have been pretty status quo since October. The world has been a pretty uh, flat place. There haven't been swings to the up, swings to the down. Returns on most asset classes are in very, very low single digits. Um, I don't think that uh, uh, psychology has boomed. I don't think that risk taking has boomed. Uh, they've, they've both been at high levels and have stayed there. Uh, it, we're in a funny uh, environment in which uh, nobody's that bullish on the outlook, uh, but they've had to act bullish in order to make a decent return in a low return environment. And I think that has remained unchanged for, let's say, the last, uh, last year. For the last four years, we've been following a mantra that I established, move forward but with caution. So, uh, you know, I didn't think, I haven't thought that, that the outlook is so bad or the prices are so high that we can't make and hold investments. Um, um, but I also thought that, th it, that it was extremely important to be cautious and careful and, and conservative in this environment because there is substantial risk taking going on uh, by other market participants, which means that we must be careful about what risks we take. It really depends uh, on what you mean by an increase. You know, is it one basis point or 300 basis points? Uh, you know, I, I, I continue to believe that the Fed and the other central banks are going to be extremely cautious, to overuse that word, uh, in applying a risk, a rate increase. Uh, they, they, the last thing they want to do is jeopardize this unsteady, uh, unpowerful uh, recovery. It continues to be pushed out into the future, and I also don't think it's going to be a, a large amount uh, of, of rate rise. I mean, in order to have very strong rates increases, you have to either have a strong demand for capital, for capital expansion, or powerful inflation. Um, and uh, we're not seeing these things. So I, I think we'll have a modest, gradual increase in rates one of these days. We've, we've been living in a low default environment thanks to, number one, an accommodative Fed, and number two, uh, and, and, and a generous capital market, and uh, a uh, and a reasonable economy. And uh, as long as those three things, three things stay unchanged, I don't think we're going to have a big jump in defaults. Now, they may not always stay uh, as low as they have been, which have been record lows for the most part. If you take out TXU, uh, you know, we've had, about, I think, five years. Uh, it's probably the lowest default five years in history. Uh, so it may not stay exactly that low. And by the way, uh, there's every chance that in the next six months we'll see something from, uh, from coal producers and, uh, and oil and gas. Uh, if, if, uh, certainly if, uh, if energy prices stay as low as they are. But fundamentally, the U.S. is better. We're stronger where our, our uh, central bank took positive action sooner and stronger and, and got our recovery going well before Europe's did. And um, uh, of course, we don't have these cohesion and governance problems that Europe has with Greece. It's, it's an interesting thing that the economy of the US, which is not uh, a thriving, booming economy, I think is still kind of the envy of the world. Um, uh, but of course, our security prices are higher. Uh, so uh, that kind of uh, detracts from the attractiveness. But I, I still think we're, I think we're okay. The, the risks here are risks of psychology and price, not fundamentals. Well, China was going through, has been going through, a uh, the revolutionary period of moving the people from the farms to the cities and putting them in industrial jobs rather than agricultural and uh, uh, stimulating the economy 
uh, to facilitate that. Um, and uh, pumping money into the economy, much of which went to fixed investment. And, uh, you know, as happens in any market, when you have uh, hyper accommodative uh, central bank and financial institutions, uh, they push money at real estate developers. And one thing about real estate developers, if, if you give them money, they're going to build. And uh, they may build uh, without asking who's going to occupy the buildings they build. So China has had too much uh, lending, uh, too much fixed investment, has empty buildings, uh, has, uh, has stimulated an already growing economy to the point where uh, I guess it was not sustainable. So now they're, the economy is in a slower period naturally, and they're pulling back on lending and stimulus. See, the boom was, was exaggerated, and now I think the, the slowdown is exaggerated. Five years ago, every th everybody thought that the outlook in China was flawless, uh, and now they, uh, some people think it has no merit. And, uh, you know, people, s investors swing to these extremes, and the truth is usually somewhere in between. So if, if the stocks go down low enough, and who's to say what that is, then there'll be a great buy for people who want to be in for 10 or 20 years. Most of the time, they don't make the same mistakes, they make new mistakes. I mean, they make new mistakes as to the details of their mistakes. They make, they make the same mistake over and over as for when things are going well to think they can never go they can never soften and when things are going poorly as to think they can never pick up certainly um, there was there was a lot of optimism over the last you know uh, three four years uh, most of which took uh, asset prices to uh, more than fair more than fair value um, so that is a recurring mistake. The exact details of what people were buying or what they were paying for it or what they were thinking changes. You know, uh, Mark Twain says, uh, is, is reputed to have said, history does not repeat, but it does rhyme. In other words, the details and the timing change, but the themes of first being too pessimistic and then being too optimistic and then being too pessimistic, this will never change and this is going on again. Well, there are a couple big differences. Number one, back in 05, 06, 07, nobody thought anything could ever go wrong. Uh, more recently, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what do you think it is that's going to go wrong? In other words, they know something's going to go wrong, they just can't figure out what it's going to be. And I must admit that it was hard, but of course, a month ago or two months ago, nobody thought Greece would blow up, nobody thought China would be down 30% in a month, and, and, and so forth. And the other main difference is, you know, there, there, I don't think there's a, there's a 2015 analog to mortgage-backed, structured mortgage-backed securities and all the leverage that was present in them.